Okay, to get really good finger technique on the horn, there's several things that we can do to become more proficient and efficient uh, just in dealing with really technical passages and how we're using our left hand. Uh, one thing I've observed over the years is that a lot of students um, take a while to develop this simply because it is a left-handed instrument. So you want to make sure that you remember sometimes your, your right-handed students, that finger technique when they're real young takes a little longer just because it's, it's, a, it's a hand they're not used to really worrying about the finer motor skills. Of, uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, using good air. Once again, air is very important in having a really good, smooth, technical passage. If I play a scale with bad air, even though my fingers are fast, I think you'll notice the difference. I've heard that many times in auditions and see in various, uh, various recordings of students submitting for um, festivals and things. Play, play the same scale, same, same finger technique, but with good air. Makes all the difference in the world. It doesn't matter how fast my fingers are, if there's no air and fuel behind the, the, the embouchure and the buzz, then it's not going to sound any good. So uh, air will certainly help propel good finger technique. Um, another good thing uh, that will really help technique, and this may seem very obvious, is having a really efficient horn. Um, make sure that the instruments in your band are, at least the valve areas are well kept, well oiled, the strings are in good shape, um, the valves are clean. Uh, students, horn students, we won't have any hope in the world of playing something fast if our valves can't keep up with us. So that uh, seems like a very obvious thing, but um, spending some time with your students, teaching them how to oil and just do some basic care of the valves will certainly help uh, efficient playing. Exercises that I would consider would be just what I demonstrated, fast scales, um, anything where the fingers are moving. I'm particularly fond of the chromatic scale because it tends to involve more of the fingers. If we just do a lot of major scales that don't have many sharps and flats, that third finger tends to get ignored and, and left aside a little bit. But if we're doing chromatic scales, um, especially for really young students, that can really help reinforce fingerings, but also get that third valve and other awkward combinations involved, which um, the earlier that can start, the better. Um, other things that can help affect good efficiency in any of our playing, but also with the, with the hand position, is making sure that the students have a very relaxed posture, especially the arms and the shoulders and the elbows. If I'm very stiff, my arms are out too far, that's a lot more awkward than just a relaxed setup. My arms, all my energy is, is focused in my air and my breathing. I'm not worrying about um, how I'm holding the horn. So making sure that, that the student is relaxed, going back to dealing with the horn, whether it's on the knee or off the knee, and just reviewing some of those basic postures to try to help the student become the most efficient player as possible.